tonight on DC News Now at 9. Flames tear through an apartment building in Hagerstown, sending dark clouds of smoke into the air. We'll hear from neighbors. Oh, that's hot. We gotta get out of here. Firefighters working around the clock to contain dozens of fires across the Commonwealth. Hi everyone, I've issued a DMV first warn day for your weekend. Which day, Saturday or Sunday? Details in a moment. An after school program that helped kids in DC stay out of trouble and prepare for success. They're they're here like with open arms. They'll teach you things you'll never learn, give you great opportunities. How a new grant will help them continue towards their goal. And for the first time ever, surgeons transplant a pig kidney into a patient. What the medical breakthrough could mean for thousands of people every year. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Flanagan. We begin with breaking news now at nine. Look at this. Crews in Hagerstown, Maryland, they're continuing to battle this enormous apartment fire. You can see here heavy flames and thick black smoke just blanketing that sky. This is in the north end of town. This is a video from a neighbor. It appears to be a few blocks or so from that apartment building. That fire was absolutely raging. Right now we're working to find out if anyone was inside that building when the fire erupted. Now the apartment building is on Oak Hill Avenue and Jamison Avenue. That's about two blocks from the Hagerstown Fairgrounds. You can see here the uh, two ladder trucks trying to tackle that fire from above the building. And here's another view of that fire taken by a neighbor who lives down the street. We're told the flames broke out about 630 tonight. We're still working right now to learn right now whether there are any injuries. Of course, we're staying on top of this breaking story for you. So stay with us for any updates both on air and online at DCNewsNow.com. Meanwhile, happening right now, hundreds of wildfires have been burning all across Virginia, including at Shenandoah National Park, where fire has affected hundreds of acres of land. This is a look at one of at least three fires in Page County. Several communities there were asked to evacuate. At least five homes in Strasburg in that area have now been destroyed. We have team coverage tonight. We begin with our Mario Carbone, who is live in Strasburg. And Mario, officials there say the fire in that area is is considered contained tonight. Yeah, Chris, which is why we're able to be down in the neighborhood we're at right now. But even at nine o'clock, we are still seeing hot spots smoking and some fire in those hot spots, including where we're at right now. This is actually where one of those homes was burnt to the ground, uh, and you can see some fire burning in the back corner where that rubble remains. All we can see out here uh, is a table and chair charred in that back corner. Uh, as people deal with the loss tonight. We know people all across the Shenandoah Valley are just waiting and hoping that this massive wildfire is out soon. Wow, that's hot. A major disaster. What started as a five acre fire quickly turning into a 450 acre fire burning across the Shenandoah Valley. Homes like this one destroyed. Hot spots still smoking. I mean, there's really no control over it. it started yesterday morning with a windstorm pretty much it's a lot of high high gusts and everything trees going down and then from there you know landing on power lines and this video shows the wind and smoke seen and felt for miles and miles Your firefighters are out there working really hard according to the national like park service nps firefighters along with the Loray fire department and the virginia department of forestry are battling the flames together to those in the area. Be aware of your surroundings. Um, pay close attention to how you're feeling. It's been very scary. For many waiting at home, there's a feeling of helplessness. Sitting around the house, just keeping a look out the window, making sure we don't see any flames close to our, our neck of the woods. Officials say at least five homes were destroyed in Strasburg. A larger fire north of that area is considered contained. I feel for the families and what they're losing. Good thing is a lot of people have been evacuated. Kelly Hansen holding on to that. You know, as long as the people are safe, you know, you may lose a home, but at least you have each other. And a burn ban or, or no fire, uh, no burning is in effect right now at Shenandoah National Park. So uh, they are reminding you not to light any flames, no fires if you're out there camping. Of course, as a fire officials continue fighting these flames. Reporting live in Strasburg tonight, I'm Marielle Carbone, DC News Now.
Well, certainly feeling for all those families who lost their homes today. Mariel, thanks. All right, for more on these fires, we get right over to Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. And Janessa, you know, the smoke already drifting towards Northern Virginia tonight. Yeah, you know what's been helpful for today is that the winds have been a little bit better compared to yesterday afternoon, a kind of a shift of our winds out of the south and southwest today. Uh, really, tomorrow is going to be a really uh, better day for firefighters trying to really get a handle of uh, those fires that are clustered at this point from Woodstock into uh, Luray. And so you can see from uh, areas like Fauquier County, Rappahannock, that's where you're dealing with that cluster of fires. And so all that smoke, when you have that southerly flow, picks up into the D.C. metro area. The smell uh, is definitely prevalent across uh, most of the DMV. That will start to subside as well as we go into uh, your Saturday. I have big time relief that's going to help those firefighters in the form of rain. What's causing uh, this all just dry conditions and the spread it's relative humidity it is very dry out there we are lacking the moisture across the DMV uh, earlier today I had noticed that relative humidity down to the single digits and teens and I mean one little spark is really going to allow the expanse expansion of fires across that region I have checked on air quality at this point still a code a yellow at this point so that's the lowest yellow uh, lowest level for air quality from Winchester out towards uh, Rappahannock as well it does look like the corridor of I-95 starting to get a little bit reduced air quality, so I'll keep an eye on that as well. Rest of the region, high pressure, it has settled in. That's allowing us to see a good clip of sunshine, but with all this clearing, folks, I mean, very cool uh, temperatures. Waking up tomorrow morning, we're talking about upper 20s to uh, lower 30s. Tomorrow, a pretty great day with less wind flow, but we do have a major storm system that's going to approach for your weekend. I have just issued a DMV first warned day. Will it be Saturday or Sunday? Day. Stick with me. I have the details. Okay, Janessa. Thanks. We'll see you then. Meanwhile, happening right now, Fairfax County Police want you to be on the lookout for an 18 year old murder suspect. Ismail Cruz Delsid is accused of killing one teenager and shooting at another. That shooting happened outside of a hotel in Herndon yesterday. Police say it stemmed from a fight between three people who all knew each other. Looks like a child, honestly. Um, I know that he's 18, but your brain doesn't stop developing until you're 25. It's just crazy to me that these are kids in the suburbs like this. There's not really that much going on. And so if something like this happens and then it's children, I don't know, makes me uh, wonder where the kids parents is, are. are. Well, police believe the suspected shooter left in a Honda Civic. Several warrants are now out for his arrest. Well, criminal justice advocates in Virginia, they were going after Governor Glenn Youngkin after Youngkin vetoed 22 bills he says undermine public safety. Now, one bill he vetoed would have expanded a program allowing reduced prison time for inmates on good behavior. Another would have shortened a person's time on probation if they maintain a stable job or education. These are evidence based reforms and these are encouraging people to do the things that we want them to do. We want them to be employed. We want them to go and get more education. We want them to go and take uh, programs. These are all people that are getting off of probation or off of some sort of supervision anyway. While many of the bills Yunkin veto had bipartisan support, it's unlikely lawmakers will have enough votes to override him when they reconvene in April. All right, working to prevent youth violence here in the district. D.C.'s Attorney General has awarded nearly $900,000 to 11 nonprofits working with kids. D.C. News Now's Daniel Hamburg joining us live tonight in our newsroom. And Daniel, you caught up with one of those recipients in Anacostia. Yeah, Chris, uh, Horton's Kids is one of many organizations that is providing support for kids and their families for 35 years. The Attorney General, Brian Schwab, says... It is one of the organizations providing proactive approaches and interventions to keep kids out of trouble. We want to see how much you've grown since January. At Horton's Kids, academics is important. With individual tutors after school, those involved even pay it forward. It helps me to help other children with it. The arts are also a priority. I do podcasting here, and I like to do poetry like to write music. It's all in an effort to not only keep kids busy, but help them grow. We provide um, holistic pre programming to our families and kids. So that includes health and wellness, youth development, um, community family um, engagement, and academics. 
Chief Program Officer Shandell Richard says a $50,000 grant from the Office of Attorney General will help them continue their mission. It really allows us to not only um, extend some of our programming, but build a youth advisory council where we're going to tap into our youth and teach them how to advocate um, for themselves. The goal of the grants is to foster youth development and reduce violence, something these teens see often. I think it's not safe. Kids can come outside. Um, just very violent. But inside these walls, dozens of kids are encouraged to make positive choices. They're here like with open arms. They'll teach you things you'll never learn, give you great opportunities. Now, the uh, grant program was initially established by the Office of Attorney General to give out $250,000 to grantees, but with a new partnership with the Greater Washington Community Foundation, that has now increased to $1.5 million. In the newsroom, Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. All right, well, can Congress beat the clock and avoid a partial government shutdown by tomorrow night? Well, of course, only time will tell. What we do know is the text of the spending bill that could prevent that shutdown. The $1.2 trillion package was published this morning. It includes more funding for child care and education, cancer and Alzheimer's research, and opioid prevention efforts. Now, the spending package would also give $200 million to Greenbelt, Maryland's new FBI headquarters. That money is drawing backlash, though, from some hardline conservatives. They claim the FBI is biased against Republicans. These claims have all been shot down by the agency. Meanwhile, Maryland Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen is applauding the funding. He says it's another step to forward to making the new FBI headquarters a reality. 